Hi and welcome back to Shorts in Psychology. Today we're going to examine the relationship between arousal and task performance. In the context of psychology, arousal is the state of being physiologically alert, awake and attentive. Arousal is one of the fundamental aspects required for attention and information process. So maintaining the optimal arousal level is vital for a person's task performance. Studies have indicated that even a minute drop in the arousal can have a negative or positive effect in the performance of the individual. This relationship between high arousal, low arousal and performance is described by the yerkes dodson law. According to this law, performance suffers when arousal is either too high or too low. Instead, there is an optimised level of arousal which will produce optimal performance. Let's examine this law in more detail. The law was first proposed by psychologists Robert Yerkes and John Dodson in 1908. They discovered that rats could be motivated to complete a maze with slight electrical shocks. But when the shocks became too strong, the rats would scurry around in random directions to escape. It was clear from the experiment that arousal levels helped to focus attention and motivation on the task at hand, but only until an optimum point. Think about the anxiety you face during an exam. If your anxiety level is at an optimum balance, you'll be energised and focused and find yourself performing better by remembering the right answers to the questions. However, if you're over anxious, you instead feel nervousness and exam anxiety, which would then hamper your ability to concentrate and remember the information you studied for the exam. So in summary, an increase in arousal to a certain level can help to boost performance. However, once the arousal crosses the optimal level, performance of the individual starts to diminish. This direct relationship between arousal and performance can be summarised by the following curve, also referred to as the inverted U model. The initial stage of the inverted U model, the curve, is the low arousal level. It's mainly associated with lack of sleep, lack of motivation, boredom, fatigue and lower body temperature. Thus our attentional mechanisms aren't really active and we are unproductive. As the arousal level increases towards the optimum level, so does attention and interest and thus performance. Optimal arousal level is the condition of perfect balance where the individual isn't too aroused, neither under aroused and thus the performance is also optimum. This is the peak shown in the curve. At this point, the individual will feel energised and focused with work feeling effortless. When the arousal level of an individual is past the optimum, tension levels rise up and arousal becomes excessive, causing performance to diminish. This level of arousal can be related to falling apart under pressure and is generally associated with panic, anxiety, burnout, lower concentration and an inability to make decisions. The inverted U-curve model is only for illustration. The reality is slightly different from individual to individual, depending on the situation. So how do you determine what arousal levels are ideal? Optimal levels of arousal vary according to a number of factors including skill level, task familiarity, personality and task complexity. The skill level of an individual affects his or her performance on the given task. That's why it's extremely imperative to train a task so that it is well learned. A highly trained individual confident in their skill is more likely to cope well in high pressure situations, as the person would be able to rely on his well rehearsed responses. Therefore, they are able to achieve optimal performance at higher levels of arousal. Similarly, task familiarity or experience is another factor. If a task is very familiar, a higher level of arousal is needed to reach optimal performance. The personality of an individual also affects how well they handle pressure. Psychologists believe that extroverts are better at handling pressure than introverts, performing better at higher levels of arousal and in the presence of others. Likewise, introverts perform better at lower levels of arousal in environments with less stimuli and ample preparation. A person's self-confidence also affects how they handle situations. People who are self-confident and believe in their abilities are able to stay focused and concentrate on tasks better. People who are not confident in their abilities will be distracted by their limiting beliefs and self-doubt in high pressure situations to maintain composure in pressurised situations. 
Task complexity is, of course, the complexity of the given task. It is the level of attention and the amount of effort asserted in order to successfully complete the task. Research has found that different tasks require different levels of arousal for optimal performance. For example, difficult or unfamiliar tasks may require lower levels of arousal to facilitate concentration, whereas tasks demanding stamina or persistence may be performed better with higher levels of arousal to induce and increase motivation. Because of task differences, the shape of the curve can be highly variable depending on what you are doing. For simple or well-learned tasks, the relationship can be fairly linear as improvement in performance is seen as arousal increases. Simple activities can be performed successfully with high stress or arousal. For complex, unfamiliar or highly intellectual tasks, however, the relationship between arousal and performance becomes inverse with declines in performance as arousal increases as these tasks require a certain level of calmness in order to perform successfully. Performance on complex tasks is much more heavily influenced by low and high arousal levels. For instance, at a track meet, it is almost impossible for sprinters to get too aroused for a race. The task is direct, uncomplicated and well learned. Run as fast as you can for a short distance. On the other hand, a gymnast performing a complicated routine and a student sitting an algebra exam will need to be fairly calm. Low arousal may lead to poor performance due to fatigue and poor concentration. However, excessive arousal will also hinder performance due to heightened anxiety. Let's finish with a few practice questions from past exams. Pause the video while you answer the question. Let's break this question down into parts to help us answer it. Ling is an Olympic swimmer. We can conclude that swimming is a simple task as it is direct and requires a lot of physical exertion. Therefore, Ling would need to be at a higher level of arousal to achieve optimal performance. At practice sessions, Ling is experiencing a low level of arousal resulting in poor performance due to a lack of attention and alertness. However, at competitive events, Ling would be experiencing adrenaline and high attention levels due to the presence of the audience and its competitive nature. Therefore, she performs better as she is at a higher level of arousal which is required for optimal performance of simple tasks such as swimming. Let's complete one more question. Pause the video again while you attempt it. The first thing to point out here is that person A and B are completing the same task and their performance levels are the same. So this is not a task complexity question. As you can see on the graph, they achieve the same performance, they are just at different locations on the curve. Person A's arousal levels are lower than the optimal levels, so you need to describe a behaviour they could do that would increase their arousal levels, such as go for a short run. As person B is excessively aroused, you need to identify a behaviour that would lower their arousal levels to help them achieve optimal performance, such as meditation or breathing exercises. Therefore, hopefully you can see that this question isn't particularly difficult, provided you correctly interpret the question and the information in the graph. That's it for now. Thanks always for listening.